producing here. Um, sorry if I sound a bit sick. Um, it's sort of winter time here. Um, but yeah, so today I'm going to be covering um, the sort of rigging for our character here. I'm going to be using both the bone generation and skeletal generation method um, for this particular rig. We're going to generate some bones um, on our sort of single layers, right? So that includes our torso and our head as well. Uh, and then we have these individual layers here that we can then generate um, a skeletal rig for. All right, so you'll see that I've already gone through the timeline and I've labeled everything for you. All right, uh, sort of just color coded things that relate to one another. Um, and then I've also set the anchor points where they need to be. So we can sort of just jump right into it. Okay, so let's get this part out the way. We're gonna focus on this arm over here. And that is our layers eight to 14. So I'm just gonna solo those, all right? Um, so the first thing that we always wanna do is just make sure that our anchor point's in the right place and that we're happy with how the rotation is going to work, all right? Uh, excuse that. So if we sort of take a look at our hand, if we move that out the way, you'll see that we've got this little wrist sort of sticking out. So sometimes when you rotate this hand, we can't really move it as far as we would like. Um, but yeah, that is um, sort of what we have going. Before I forget, massive shout out to my friend Chris um, for providing this rig to us. I'll put a link to his Instagram and um, pretty much all of that below. So yeah, give him some support. He's a fantastic designer and uh, we can thank him for this rig. All right, so we're going to take a look at this arm and what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the bone rig. All right, so if we take a look at Duik, all right, so this is the entire Duik panel. Uh, come on, work with me here. Uh, there we go. All right, and I've just sort of like brought it up to the bare essentials that we need. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna click on arm or front leg and do it's gonna do its magic uh, and it's gonna generate those shapes for us. All right, so for those of you who don't know or if we've forgotten, uh, these makes, um, sorry, this process makes shape layers. That's what these um, items or layers, uh, icons, there we go, uh, words I can speak. These icons mean that they are reference layers, so if we render, we don't have to turn them off. They won't render in the video. S stands for structure, as we can see in our timeline over here. Um, and then we have arm tip, which refers to this um, sort of red circle here. We have the hand, the forearm, and the arm. All right, so we need to remember that in terms of layer hierarchy or sort of body hierarchy, the upper parts will always move the layers below when it comes to these rigs. All right, so always just rig it from the top down. Start at the torso and work your way further away. All right, so we can place these at our sort of joints um, and we can drop the hand pin over here and then we can just grab this pin and say, cool, that's where the hand ends, sorted. All right, the next thing that we need to do is we are going to um, parent what we need to this, all right? Um, so we've got the structure and now we just need to grab this, right? So now left upper arm, so that's layer 13, we can parent that to arm, which is layer four. Uh, forearm layer 13, we can parent to forearm layer three. The hand, we can parent uh, to the hand for now. We're gonna change that parent in a moment but then we can grab all of our fingers and we can parent those to left hand. So that's layers 15 to 18, parented to layer 14. All right, once these parents are done, what we can do is just select these bones and see here we're in the structures. So we're gonna to jump to our second tab, links and constraints, and we are going to say auto rig and IK. Boom, Duik does its magic. And now I have an actual controller and that controller is going to drive uh, the rig that we now have. All right, so, We've now created those bones. We don't need to see them anymore. So at the bottom of our initial space here in the structures, way down at the bottom, we can say show hide. All right, and that will then essentially, if I deselect it, let's see if that works now, show hide. Cool. As long as I don't have a layer selected, it's going to show or hide uh, the sort of bone structure. Okay. So we now have this hand icon and this icon is going to drive our actual motion. All right. So what that means is that um, if I drag this too far away, we can see that we've got some stretch going, but at the same time, our sort of inverse kinematics is working quite well. Inverse kinematics simply meaning that a, a structure or a rig is being driven by a single point. 
Okay, so what we can do with that, with this sort of hand, C hand, controller hand, as we can see here, um, is we can change a couple of these options. All right, so the icon itself, I can change my color. So you'll see that I, um, I made all of my layers referring to this particular arm red. So it is red, sorted already. Uh, the position, I can change this position without worrying about it moving my hand. All right, so what I wanna do just for my own personal sake, feel free to do the same, is I am going to rotate it around and drop it over my hand. And then I just always know exactly which way this hand is facing and I can then adjust the rotation in a moment as well. I'll also drop my size down. So if I sort of bring that to about 70%, there we go. Boom, and our hand works. Cool. So if we scroll down here, we can obviously change the opacity if we want. I don't really see the point. We can also adjust our anchor point. Again, I'm happy with where it is. Okay. So side of the arm set to the left, that's fine. And then we want to just come down here to stretch and we want to turn off auto stretch. All right. When I turn that off, I can still drag my arm too far away, but at least it's not breaking that actual limb for now. All righty. So you'll see that when we drag this, our hand looks like a horribly broken wrist, right? And the reason for that is because we have parented our hand um, boom, to the structure for the hand, all right? So my little workaround, if you find a better way, then by all means, let me know. But my little workaround for that, um, because if you take a look here, if I try and adjust the rotation, my assets are red or my information is red, that means that this information is locked to my controller. All right, so I can't then adjust the rotation. I could always animate the actual rotation on the hand itself. All right, however, why animate more layers than you need to? I'm just going to click my drop down and I'm going to parent it to layer one C hand. All right, so now I can move my hand. Okay, just need to note that I can pull it too far. It's sort of one of the downsides of parenting it there, but I can then also rotate that as necessary so rather than working over two layers i can now just animate the one position and rotation let's put those back to where they were okay so that is the skeletal rig for that particular arm right nice and easy uh fairly easy to follow through and like i said single point controlling okay what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just lock these i can unsolo uh all of this and in this video we're not going to be doing any animation so i can actually grab these I can make them shy, right? This weird little mushroom button, or it's supposed to be a man, I guess. Click it until he's dropped down, turn this button on over here, and now they're no longer in my, uh, like in my timeline. So I can turn these ones off as well, right? Just saving space. Cool. So the next thing that we're gonna move on to is how to work with an element or a layer that is one solid piece, right? So we don't have a cut at the elbow. So what I'll do quickly is just solo all of this, and then we can take a look. All right, so how we're gonna go about this is, first off, let's just grab our um, uh, the fingers, all right? So layers 23 to 26, and we can parent those to the hand, right? We don't have to parent the hand to anything just yet. Uh, we can obviously parent this arm to the torso, all right? Just to make sure that everything works. So if I'm my torso here, layer 20, um, and I'm pretty sure I forgot to parent uh, my structure just now, but I'll, I'll see that uh, for now. Let's just focus here. Okay, so I've got the structure as we can see it's a single layer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the puppet pin tool All right, so when we select the pin tool, we're going to drop one in the wrist one in the elbow and One in the shoulder. All right, and I'm moving um, sort of like from the furthest point towards my main body, which is obviously going to be the torso or the uh, the pelvis, right? Um, and then if you sort of don't see this mesh, there's this little option up here. You can turn that on and off. All right, so currently if we take a look in our puppet, sort of in our controls over here or down here in our drop down, you'll see that our puppet engine is set to advanced. All right, so we need to drop that to legacy. Now, what's the difference? Okay, first of all, Duick struggles when interpreting um, the sort of advanced option. And that's because rather than working with a specified amount of triangles, which is what creates our deform mesh, as you can see here, it's stuck with the, I don't understand the mass behind it, um, but it's stuck with this density level. So if I drop that down to nine, already see how many triangles we're losing. Um, and then that's obviously going to start to affect our deform. 
All right, so just with one of the pins selected, I'm going to grab this drop down and set it to legacy. All right, I then need to reselect one of these points and you'll see the density has now changed to triangles. All right, so I'm going to set this to 500. It's important that we try to get a sort of sweet spot. All right, if we have too few triangles, so if I were to type in 10, for example, um, we have horrible PlayStation 1 graphics. All right, and if I put in too many, which I'm not going to try now, um, the sheer amount of information that is being then shown in here tends to make my machine crash. So I'm assuming that it would make other machines crash as well. All right, so my puppet is selected, set to legacy, and now what I can do, I'm going to select my right layer arm, for me that's layer 22, and I'm going to hit U for uniform. Boom, and that automatically brings up all the sort of information that has keyframes, which are automatically generated when I create points, uh, while collapsing everything superfluous that we don't need to see. All right, so like I said, I started from the furthest away point and I moved towards my torso, and our sort of puppet pins have followed that structure. All right. The next thing is it's very important that we label these because when we generate bones, it's going to follow the naming structure that we use. All right. So this is already called our uh, right arm, our arm. So I'm then just going to grab this and I'm just going to label these, right? So wrist, elbow and shoulder and then will be sorted. So normally I would say R underscore um, and then like whatever the joint is, but thankfully Duik automatically tells us the entire link chain for what it's referencing. All right, so once I've labeled these, I can then just click and drag to select these keyframes and I'm gonna jump into my second panel in Duik which reads links and constraints. Let's drag this up a little bit. All right, so under links and constraints, you'll find this option, add bones. It's got the exact same icon as the puppet pin tool, so visually easy to also understand. And I'm just gonna click on that. Boom, Duik does its thing, and it creates these points. Now, why do we do this rather than just using the puppet pin? Reason being is that I can also adjust the rotation of these points, all right? And that's very helpful rather than then trying to sort of like jippo it or magic it later down the line. Okay, so we've got these bones, B for bone, uh, sort of next section, R arm tells you what it's referencing and then the joint itself. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab these layers and I want to parent them to each other. All right, so I'm going to parent my wrist to my elbow, my elbow to my shoulder, and then I can parent my shoulder to my torso. All right, so what this means is now when I move my shoulder pin, it's going to adjust everything with it. I can also then adjust its rotation. However, if I move my elbow, it's not going to move my shoulder, but it will move my wrist. And again, I can adjust my rotation. Cool. And then again, for the wrist, obviously, rotation is not going to do anything. However, I can move it. Okay. So what we're going to do now, just to finish the structure of this arm, is we're going to grab the hand, right? Right hand, layer 30. Okay, you'll see that I didn't parent that to anything. I'm going to parent that to my wrist bone. All right. Reason for doing that is now when I use the rotation on my wrist bone, it's going to rotate my hand as well. All right. It's also then going to move my hand with my actual arm, allowing me not to then have to animate the position of the hand to try and follow that. All right. It's important to remember that when we're working with these options, we're not actually changing the shape of this object. We're simply applying a deform, uh, sort of like optical illusion, I guess you could call it. The asset will always look like this, nice and straight, mathematically, but visually, we are just telling it, move information from those triangles to this particular point. All right. So now that that is done, um, you'll see that I've now labeled my, uh, my layers here. They've already been sort of made in blue. However, my right arm is orange. Okay, so I'm just going to change that quickly so that I know that they're ref like referring to each other. Um, and then what I can do as well is I can just quickly change the properties of these sort of icons just by grabbing them, selecting my eye picker tool and just dropping it on the color over there. Okay, the size is also quite obnoxious. So I'm going to drop this down to 50%, uh, maybe a bit too small. Let's call it 70. Uh, and I'll do that for all of them as well. And this is just so that when I have everything showing up on screen, I'm not just being blinded by the sheer number of pins on screen. Okay, 
So let me just quickly unhide this so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, these arms uh, should stay, pr practice what I preach. Let's stick to the, to the labels here. Uh, let's turn off this solo so I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so these arms over here are obviously set to red and I am going to grab all of these and set them to red as well. That way, at least I know that that is what it's referring to. All right, so then I can grab these Boom, and I can turn shy back on, can I? Yes, okay, cool. So that's done and out the way. Um, let's quickly deselect that, jump back in here and hide my bones. Alrighty, cool. So we have now set up our arm rig, all right? But you'll see that our pins are kind of disappearing behind and obviously that's because of our layer structure. So what I'm going to do, and this is why I unshied that in the first place, my bad, is I'm just going to drag these to the very top, all right? And I'm just gonna plant them over here. And at least now they're sitting on top of the asset. And again, that's why I color code them so that I know when I'm working with green layers, which is the torso, the green pins refer to that, the orange pins refer to the arm, etc. All right, something that I may have forgotten to mention, just to point it out quickly now, you'll see that this controller has this dotted line sort of connecting from where our anchor point is to the shoulder. This line just shows you where this bone structure starts and ends. All right, so it sort of just gives you a visual idea of uh, what's being affected by that. Okay, cool. Next thing we're gonna focus on is our um, foot layer over here and the first thing i'm going to do is just hold down shift and hit up arrow key twice maybe three times uh let's leave it at twice and that's at least going to make it look as though our feet are standing on separate planes rather than full profile okay so let's focus on our right leg find that quickly shy some things and solo these okay so we're going to do the exact same thing uh let's turn our foot off for now and i'm going to grab my puppet pin tool i'll place one in the ankle one in the knee and one in the hip. And I tend to just drop these in the uh, where my anchor point is just so I know that that's where the rotation is going to take place. Okay, next step, remember very important, set this to legacy, right? If we don't set it to legacy, it's going to break later down the line and that is absolutely heartbreaking. All right, so let's not experience that. You to bring up our um, uh, puppet pins, sorry, words. Uh, and then I can just label this as, um, we'll call that ankle, we'll call that knee, and then we'll call that hip. Okay. Again, select those, jump to our second tab in Duik, and we'll select add bones. Cool, nice and simple. Again, I'm just gonna quickly color code these so that I know what they're referring to. So I guess that would be pink, or no, these are fuchsia. Uh, okay, so my ankle bone parented to my knee bone, knee bone parented to the hip bone. Again, I can check that this is working by dragging it around or using my rotation tool to change that. I can then make sure my knee is bending, that's looking pretty good. And then this obviously is not going to affect anything if I rotate it just yet, but I can drag it around. All right, cool. So now um, what I can do is I can bring my foot back up. All right, and what we're gonna do with this foot as well, puppet pin tool, I'm gonna to drop one in the toes, one sort of in the sort of midpoint in the heel um, or the ball of the foot, I suppose. And then this is, I'm just gonna call it heel even though it's sitting by the ankle. All right, so again, change that to legacy and we can just see how these are gonna move quickly. All right, so it is gonna deform the heel a little bit, but that's okay because when we adjust it with the rotation, it's not gonna to be too big an issue. All right, oops, double click there. Excuse me, I'm working on a trackpad. All right, so again, bring these up. Let's label this toes, or we'll label this uh, ball, whatever you want. I just associate with the ball of the foot, and then we'll call this heel, like I said, even though it's technically where the ankle would meet the shoe. Okay, uh, let's add some bones to that. And these are just really big and scary, so I'm going to scale these ones down. Let's take that down to about 65. Uh, whatever sort of tickles your fancy really, but I just don't want them to be overlapping like this. Make that uh, yeah, 50 for now, why not? Um, and then of course being a little bit of a perfectionist, I want to make sure that they're all the same size. Um, there we go. And then we can also change our legs. Uh, unfortunately, we can't change the size of them sort of at the same time. Uh, let's call that 70. 
Okay. Um, and then 70 again and 70 again. Cool. Um, so then we can see that these icons are getting a little bit confusing, right? So what I'm going to do rather is I'm going to change the label of my right foot. Uh, let's just call it purple. And then I will adjust, uh, whoop, did the wrong one there. These, let's make these purple. And then I'll change the other foot as well. And then that way, I'm not going to be worried about getting them confused. All right, as you can see, they do tend to overlap. So we need to make careful when we uh, make careful, be careful when we select them so that we don't actually break anything or mess with the wrong thing. All right, uh, so yeah, if you are bored of seeing this particular setup, for, by all means, jump through the video uh, and uh, we'll continue shortly. Okay, well, there we go. So I've already parented these bones to each other. All right, so what I'm going to do with the foot is I'm going to parent my toes, the bones for the toes, layer 35 to layer 34, ball of the foot, ball of the foot to the heel of the foot. All right, again, I can check the rotation by rotating there. All right, ball of the foot, let's test that. Boom, okay, notice obviously we can break it, but also notice that if we bend it upwards slightly with the toes following, we can then sort of sell the idea of our foot bending as we step, all right? Uh, and then the toes is not going to rotate at all, but we can change its position, all right, as necessary. Cool. So then what we can do is we can take this heel bone and we can parent it to the ankle, all right? So let's grab that heel. Let's actually move these bones down so we can actually see that we are working with this sort of structure. And we bring it up here and drop it over here. Okay, cool. So our heel is going to be parented to the ankle bone. All right, reason for this now is if I add some rotation, it drags our foot with it, cool. And if I rotate my ankle, it will rotate my foot as well. Okay, so again, just saving us animating more layers than necessary. Cool, our hip, we can parent to our pelvis. All right, uh, that's our layer 30 over here. And uh, we're not going to really do much with that one. So let's jump back into here and see what else we can work with. All right. Next thing we're going to do is uh, this foot. We're going to follow the exact same setup. So I'll speed through this and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so this entire system has now been set up. Uh, the last thing that we wanna do is sort of just grab these two pins over here and make sure that they are both set to pelvis. All right, so pelvis, what was that layer is something, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. there we go, layer 36 currently. Okay, we're not gonna move, uh, sort of add anything to our pelvis, but at least that is now working. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at our torso. It works the exact same way. First thing I'm going to do with the said torso is I'm going to parent it to the pelvis, right? Pelvis is sort of our main driving force of our body. And then I'm going to grab my shoulder. Let's grab that. Um, and we can just grab the arm. And I'm going to parent that to the torso as well. All right, that way when the torso moves, it's obviously going to move our arm as well. Cool. Uh, so there we go. Um, and then da, 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 hand, 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 hand. Also, then needs to uh, be parented to our torso as well. See that? So that doesn't break anything. Cool. But then when that moves, it moves as well. Fantastic. Okay. So torso is going to work the exact same way. Uh, we can take a look at the uh, the head as well. So let's grab that. I'm going to just solo those two. Okay, so yeah, just nice simple shapes. Um, so for the torso, you'll see that I've sort of placed the anchor points near where the navel would be. Uh, again, we'll grab our puppet pin tool and I'm just gonna follow this vertical line over here for our sort of three quarter view, right? So sort of where our hip would be, where our navel would be and where our neck would be. 
Okay, again, set that to legacy. We can label those as we see fit. So this will be, um, what would we call this, hips. All right, not to be confused with our other hip layers on the legs. Uh, I'll call this navel because I hate the word belly button. And then we've got the neck. Okay, grab those. Let's add some bones sorted. All right. Um, our torso is green, so we can just quickly label these as green as well. And let's bring these up to above our bone layers, right? So see so, you how know, we can sit on top of the right arm. Maybe just below the right arm, because that arm's obviously going to overlap. Um, okay, so then uh, I'll leave the size as is. We'll just quickly change the color so we can see exactly what it is we're working with. Um, and yeah, you might think I'm being ridiculous just in terms of the labeling, but it is important. It's easy then to sort of at a glance see what we're looking at. You can pass this file onto someone else or receive it from someone else. And then life is just a lot simpler than trying to figure out from scratch what you're looking at. Okay, so now we've got the head. We're going to do the exact same thing. All right, so I'm going to grab my pin tool and sort of following this line as well. So I'll sort of place my, uh, my neck over there, the center of my face, right, sort of like there. And then I'm just going to place my pin here at the top. All right, and that sort of just gives us more, what I feel slightly more realistic, um, sort of bend there. All right, set that to legacy, rename everything. So we then have our neck, uh, we've got our face, Let's kind of call it that and then I'll just call it top uh, top of the head all right it's nice and simple grab those Let's just make sure I don't mess up and put our keyframes there by accident uh, and we can add bones cool so then also just super quickly let's grab these make them blue and uh, then we can work on some parenting that's gonna help drive uh, sort of this portion of the body all right uh, so let's just collapse that. Let's grab these bones here and drag them up to the top. All right, so that's the bones for our head. And we have our torso set up as well. Okay, so let me bring these back up. Um, and yeah, that's fine. Okay, so again, we are going to now, remember, we're going to move from the furthest points down towards the torso. All right, when we're dealing with the torso, we're going to move towards the pelvis. So for our head, we're going to grab the top. We'll parent that to the head face, parent the face to the neck, all right? So now when the sort of top moves, right? That's the end of the points. That's not gonna change anything. However, when I rotate the face, that's going to help move my top, all right? And then when I rotate the neck, it's going to just rotate the entire layer, okay? Cool. Then I'm going to parent my neck to the neck, torso neck, sorted. I'll grab that torso neck and parent it to the navel and the navel parented to the hips, right? And then these hips are going to be parented to the pelvis bone, which is going to be like all the way down here now. There we go, layer 42. Okay, so let's see how that now changes it, right? So I've played with those rotations. Let's grab my torso neck and we can play with that rotation there. Cool. Uh, we can also then just grab our navel and that will drive everything above it. And then our hips are just going to drive everything above that. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is we can take a look at, let's just unsolo everything, what to do with our face sort of graphics, right? So we've got an ear, we've got shades, and we've got a mouth. Okay, and we kind of, oh, and a hat as well, let's not forget that. Uh, and we kind of want these to follow when we move our objects, right? So currently they're kind of just floating in space. Now, what we can do with the hat is we can actually parent that. We're going to be parenting all of these to the face marker. All right, so ba -ba -bum. let's shy these for now. Let's turn shy back on. Uh, what else can I shy? Keep those. Let's get rid of. Okay, cool. We're still going to deal with the collar as well. Um, the head, as far as I can tell, not the arms. Sorry, I'm trying to grab a hold of the torso. Yo, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, we have parented our torso to our pelvis, right? So our pelvis is going to be what we use to move. Uh, everything sort of forward uh, or we could generate a null and then just parent the torso to that 
uh, sorry, the, the pelvis to that, all right? So before we move on, let's just quickly deal with our collars. Um, we can just grab the uh, collar back and parent that to collar front. Um, and then I wanna see what happens if we parent this to the neck layer, which is layer three right now. Let's drop that down. Uh, head, neck, and let's see what this does. Okay, rotation. Okay, well, that um, makes obvious sense. Uh, so let's just take a look again. Does it help to parent it to the face? Now, the reason why I'm asking is I want to see how this is going to, oh, don't double click it, uh, how this is going to affect it. Okay, so that's that's not gonna work too well. No, <laughs> not at all. Okay, so we can uh, just parent those to that neck over there. All right, so let's find them again. Collar front, collar back, parent it to layer three, head, neck. All right, so now we're gonna grab our face elements, that's uh, mouth, shades, ear, and hat. Um, and we are going to parent those to layer two, head, face, all right? Reason for this is now when I deform, these objects are going to follow it, all right? And obviously we are going to have a little bit of clipping, but that is then simple to fix when it comes to just applying some subtle position changes um, to the cap. If we rotate, right, at least that also follows um, if we don't push it too far backwards. But now we've got this sort of elements that actually sort of follow the deformation that we're using. Okay, so I want to now see whether or not this entire rig is working. And the best way to do that is to grab my pelvis. Let's grab its position and its rotation and let's just move it around. Cool, nothing's being left behind. Nothing is sort of floating in space. None of our rigs are breaking. And yeah, this character is now completely set up to be animated. Cool, so I hope you found this um, useful. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, by all means, drop me a comment. Um, like I said before, I am sort of not going to claim that I know everything. Uh, so by all means, find other YouTube channels. There are some fast, uh, fastic, fantastic ones out there. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around. Ciao.